happy Friday. Hey guys, hey. what's up? Happy Friday. How are y'all doing today? Good. How are you? Good. Doing good. Trying to stay cool. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but it's been warm here. <laughs> we had all that rain, you know, for, um, I don't, I don't know, it's rained for like three months here. But now, you know, that storm that just parked over the beach and dumped water forever. Yeah, it's finally chilled out. Humidity's dropping. So, yeah, good things. Thanks. Finally. <laughs> We can get back to painting and actually, like you know, getting getting things stuff. done. Things actually dry. Yes, I we might actually have to. We might actually have to cover that one time in in one of these of just some of the weird issues that we come across just due to weather or due to things that are just completely out of our control. It's like just stuff that wrecks, wrecks our week, and we just complain to each other over it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I didn't I didn't realize that resin mixed differently in different humidities and different heat and different yeah. temperatures and stuff until you guys had talked to me about it. So I don't know. I think resin, that's cool. Yeah, your thing resin hates moisture. It's not good. Silicone loves moisture. When it's when it's hot and humid, silicone loves that. I I, I did a little trick actually when I would mix a silicone mold, I would sometimes uh, get a paper towel, damp, put, drape it over the mold box and put it in the sun or in the back of my truck because it had a black uh, bed liner. And that would really kick off the silicone a lot faster. It just, it loved the humidity and the heat. Yeah. See, okay. That, that kind of stuff is what I find fascinating. We, we definitely need to cover more of that at some point. <laughs> I'm going to let Jared just keep talking about it. You know, uh, Amy, did I tell you? So, so my mom will talk about my mom again because she likes it. Uh, <laughs> hey, mom, how you doing? Everybody say hey. Yay. What's hey. Uh, uh, so she always checks in and she's got her thoughts on these things we do. And she was saying, you got to be quiet. You got to let Jared talk more. And uh, <laughs> my mom doesn't really talk like that. So I'm just going to keep talking like that because it irritates her. But um, she's got this real <laughs> Southern Belle accent. And uh, she's like, you got to be quiet. You got to let Jared talk more. He's just got this very soothing voice. And I'm like, soothing voice? And she goes, it's a honey voice. He's got a honey voice. And uh, oh, I'm right. going to, uh, there you go, mom. I'm going to let Jared talk more. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, I'm actually uh, highly allergic phone. to it's all you. Uh, I'm actually highly allergic to urethane resins now because I spent so much time around them. So I think anybody who's worked on resins, they know that they're not. You don't want to breathe them. They're not great. I didn't get that brief when I started working with resins. And no. the, the team that kind of handed me off and said, hey, you cast all this stuff up. I'm like, okay, cool. They gave me like the 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 worst resin to use. I, I forgot the name of it, but it's that yellow stuff. Oh, it just it smells like old paneling. Yeah, the, it's, yeah. it's really like arsenic. Yeah, yeah. And I, I noticed after a day or two that my my upper lip was like kind of burning a little bit. Oh, like yeah. it was like chemical burn, breathing it in. And after a week, I started getting what looked like like poison oak blotches on my skin, and they itched like poison oak too. It was crazy. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, somebody said like, "Hey, you're not wearing a mask." Like nobody told me. Like, I was like 19. I, I had never worked with resins before, and I'm like, nobody told me I need to work with a mask. I need to wear a mask. And they're like, "Yeah, you need a, like a respirator. Actually, a full face one would be better, so you don't splash it in your eyes." Like, oh, okay, that explains the allergic breakout I'm having. Yeah, yeah so ever since then. That explains then the gel you were growing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm toxed out on urethane resins. I do. I need to wear a respirator, even sanding them now. If I sand resin, because it releases, it gasses out a little bit. It's that gas, the catalyzing gas that, that gets you. So, yeah, I don't like resins. Not good. Yeah. I've got, I got six toes on one foot now from working with <laughs> I mean, it'll oh, you make worked you with that resin. You worked with that <laughs> resin. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, no, it's funny. I've, I've got pictures where I would be sanding on just a block of resin with a Dremel, you know, striking oh, yeah. you know, on my chest. And there's just this mound of powder, you know, under, yeah. you know, across my chest in these photos, or you're just covered in the face. I mean, you get older and you, of course, you gear up. Now I look like I'm, I'm going into a, you know, a, a decontamination zone you know i've got the mask oh, yeah. friggin earplugs and everything else on but uh 
yeah, back in the day, you're a little more reckless, you know, yeah. a lot of painting and you go blow your nose that night. You just, whatever color paint you were working with, it's just, wow, I just blew yep. purple, you know? So yeah. For this, uh, there was this, um, the one time I did get a, a fair warning, there was this material called, uh, it's green foam. It, it's like a four pound weight uh, urethane foam. And it comes in these blocks. And it's almost like the density of the, the floral foam that you get like Michael's or Joanne's. You oh know, yeah, that's, that's very satisfying to poke holes in. Yeah, you poke holes in it. They make an industrial carving version of that. So you can, you can sculpt, um, I mean, we did rocks and caves and asteroids, all that kind of mm -hmm. miniature set piece stuff. And for the one I had to do, it was a cave. So I had to get in the block almost, like scrunch down and carve in it. And I had to wear a full ET suit, I called it. <laughs> because it was, all, it was all white and had a self-contained uh, filter on it, a hose that led down to the, to the back and you wore it. Oh, this is awesome. I want one. Right? Uh, probably the funnest part of that was getting in that suit and be like, yeah, I'm going to uh, go autopsy ET now and climb in there. <laughs> Did you exaggerate the breathing sounds? You know, psh, oh yeah, psh, I tried. I tried to sound yeah. like Darth Vader, a little bit like Back to the Future when he's got the, yeah, do that. the suit on. Yeah, <laughs> I am from Planet Vulcan. I am Darth Vader. It's great. It's great. So everything we're talking about now is like the furthest thing from what I thought we were going to talk about. By the way, <laughs> I know, right? I don't know, I don't know how we headed down that road, but we didn't have anything to talk about anyway. So it might as well be this. Yeah, yeah. I hope it's kind of interesting. Related? Yeah, it is. yeah. It's it's been a weird it's been a weird enough week. Um, I was gonna say yeah, earlier we I meant to bring up before we were on this thing uh, to go over the state of a couple of our prototypes, and we probably shouldn't do it now, but I'm tempted to because uh, now nah, we'll talk about that later. We won't we won't do that. But anyway, uh, we'll yeah, Amy has to show off next week. We're, we're getting oh. some new samples in from some places this, you know, during the in-between times of these videos. So we, we should just wait until next week and show some stuff. I, I didn't see yesterday's updates because we were busy with that other thing that I'm tempted to talk about, but I won't. But uh, I'd have thrown at you just to mess both of you up. But uh, <laughs> did we get stuff in yesterday like we were supposed to? Um, I didn't see um, the photo that we were looking for, but... We are supposed to also have in-person samples coming for both the Hunter Seeker and the Chris Knife. Okay. Yeah. So between now and next week. So to, to share with the group, uh, we, we had a, like a last minute kind of packaging adjustment revision on the Hunter Seeker that was, you know, requested to the factory to make sure it's safe and secure in its box and it, it can transit without damage. And so that's one of the last hurdles we're looking at and getting that thing completed. And, um, I'll share that with you later today, Ryland, and we'll get that sample in and we can sign off on it and go, go, go. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, we talked about that, I think, if not in the last video, the one before that, just some of the tiny little details that goes into packaging and the uh, the Hunter Seeker, yeah, we wanted to uh, clamshell everything in just so it didn't come loose and rattle yeah. around for forever. So no. Um, yeah, that'll be good to get this sewed up. I'm, I'm anxious to be done with those. You guys sure you don't want to talk about licensing this week? You sure you don't no. want to? No. Oh, okay. okay. My brain is kind of tired of that right now. I I feel like my brain is leaking through my ears a little bit. I would I would like to talk <laughs> about something fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, let's have, I'm let's all have fun. So nine minutes in. Well, we're done. Everybody have a good week. A good weekend. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see you next week. Wait, I got another week. You don't, have, you don't have that cool voice. Go, go ahead. Oh no, you've got that cool piece that was by your lamp earlier. You moved it. I thought we were going to talk about that. Oh yeah. Oh, I love you, bro. I love you. Um, thank you. All right. So we will talk. So there is a little something to talk about. We um, all right. We mentioned it. I don't know how many of these back. We we talked a little bit about maybe getting into um, some crypto stuff, some cryptozoology, some misplaced artifacts, that sort of thing. Um, what do you want to see first? I got stuff all in front of me. I think you get a lead with the Patterson print. You think, you think so? Okay. Yeah, because I'm a huge fan of Bigfoot. So the 1967 the Patterson cast. This is uh, I've had this in my collection for like, man, probably 25 years. And this is a really early uh, patty cast, as we call it, you know, from Bluff Creek, 
when you guys, um, for anybody who's watching, if you're not, you know, down with Bigfoot, uh, whenever you see the a, a lot of the early video of Bigfoot kind of loping around uh, the the riverbed, and you know, his shoulders turn as he turns, and then there's all the discussion about, you know, could this be faked? Was it faked? And and so forth. So it's uh, as far as Bigfoot casts go, this is uh, just a really clean, pretty early example of one of a plaster cast. And we're kind of toying with the idea of having a whole line of things like this. Um, you know, there would, of course, be like the Bigfoot cast. And then there's things yeah. like Fiji mermaids. So a lot of people know about Fiji mermaids by way of uh, like uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not, you know, P.T. Barnum. Uh, lots of really interesting uh dives you could take on Fiji mermaids and when they came about, how they came about, when this reported first one uh, was stuck out there for a uh, public view, that sort of thing. But uh, it, it's an interesting read if you want to get into it. But this guy uh, is a really good example of just a, a super well-made Fiji mermaid. Uh, pretty sure these are, um, any little animal parts came after, I'm, I'm sure the, the, the little animal had passed, but I think these are either armadillo feet or like little alligator feet. I don't know what the rest of the parts are, but it's a, it's an older piece and uh, I love it. It's really pretty. I don't know if you can see the scales. Oh yeah. Was, Jared was saying when we were looking at this earlier, that like he could just smell it from, from yeah. there. And it, it uh, looks it, like it smells. It has no smell, but it, it's definitely, uh, Rhonda doesn't like it. She, she doesn't like to make eye contact with it. <laughs> It'll snatch your soul. That's why it it's might it's pretty creepy. It might, but that's also a good example of some things we're talking about. Maybe doing something with we'd change up its pose. Uh, Jared and I were talking about the different poses you see when you look at some of the 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 more well known Fiji mermaids, like the Har Harvard. I think it was Fiji mermaid. Uh, it's it's setting more up on its tail, rearing more up than horizontal. Um, we might be able to get a couple pictures up. Um, by the time we post this, I don't know. Um, but that's another thing we were talking about doing silly little things like um, old uh, Aztec death whistles. Uh, that that sort of stuff. Uh, things that would go in your uh, cabinet of curiosities. Yep. yep. I, uh, I so like pieces of, you know, supposedly cryptid animals, claws, teeth, footprints, skin, scales, that kind of stuff I think is awesome. Cursed objects. Cursed objects, totally. Shrunken yeah. heads, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Shrunken heads. I, I wish I, I, I'm on the hunt right now for a, a good little replica of a Ecuadorian shrunken head. And, you know, there's so many out there and, and most of them are just, eh, meh. There's somewhere between the thing that you get when they can't guess your weight at the fair and <laughs> 24 bucks on Etsy and, and, there's there's nothing in between, you know. I, I'd I'd like to see one, you know, made out of uh, some 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 real dead people, and uh, you know, some actual. No, not, not that bad. I was about to say it sounds like we need to make one of our own, but then you said real dead people, and yeah, you know, you know we just we get a little agreement with a local, you know, a local guy or something, and hey, you're gonna use that head, you know, <laughs> we got plans. No, nothing like that. Nothing like that. Oh, yeah. um, but there are there are good replicas now. Um, uh, we'll we'll get into the interesting history of Ecuadorian shrunken heads sometime because uh, it's you know when you hear the stories, the old you know traveler stories when people would bring these things home in the you know forties, fifties, what, what what have you, they were usually real. You know you know a lot of them were real. And uh, but with the oh these are tribal elders and one tribe took the head of another tribal elder and, and that sort of thing and shrunk it. Well, there's only so many tribes and so many tribal elders. Uh, uh, the, the history of those things uh, boils down to they, they started using regular dead people heads. You know, the shrunken heads were so popular. And as I'm talking about this, it's, it's kind of dark, right? <laughs> like, it goes down a dark path. It, it started out, hey, Ecuadorian shrunken heads, yay. And then as I'm <laughs> talking about it, I'm like, hey, wait a minute. Okay, so so, so, so we will do uh, some, some good facts of Ecuadorian yes. shrunken heads for those who enjoy those 
curiosities in their collection. I am going to shut up now because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad so, things. Go ahead, save me. So since we've had sort of a running joke of Tyler sculpting his own likeness into the ashtray cherub sculpt, and you know, just some weird things, can we make Tyler into a shrunken head? Just we theme, a- we theme the shrunken head off of Tyler. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's what we should do. I think that would be hilarious. That and I think he cool. would approve. So, you know, it's fine. I mean, a shrunken head, it, it should look a little a little sinister, right? But, and, and Tyler does have an angelic face. Um, so, um, he has a very I don't know. expressive face. We could probably know, get unless, no. getting, unless, he, unless he's liquored up, then he gets a little, you know, like he's, <laughs> he's got a bell palsy. You know, I don't have... <laughs> I'm having a hard time, guys. Help me. <laughs> Help me. That's okay. Um, I'm going to get a text from Tyler like, dude, no. Yeah. <laughs> talking about me. Quit. So uh, we, we want to hear from our followers. And as yes. Ryan likes to say, the six people that watch this video and his mom, um, what kind seven. of suggestions? Yeah, seven. What kind of suggestions you all have for uh, interesting cabinet of curiosity items? Are there things we haven't mentioned? Things that you want to see that would be really cool. Uh, we're definitely going to do some Bigfoot stuff, 100%. But other items that would be uh, on your list to display in a cabinet of curiosities. We'd love to hear it. Yeah. That creepy guy. Yeah. <laughs> and a big, a big shout out to all of you who have actually written in with just suggestions, not just about curiosities. But I do want to say thank you yeah. guys. We don't always, I don't always have the time to individually go back and say, okay, each one of these is super amazing. Thank you so much. But we actually do talk about a lot of the suggestions that you guys send in. So thank you for sending them and please keep doing it. We we really do enjoy. Oh, did you break your Fiji mermaid? Oh no, is he broken? Oh. Just making sure some bad shit's not getting ready to go down here. Hang on a second. <laughs> I think there's some kind of rule if you're not a good custodian of the Fiji mermaid. I was Did you say, remember? is it getting cooler in there? It seems like there might be a little breeze coming in. I, like I can see your breath. Flickering a little bit. I can yeah. see your breath. You it's release of, the soul. It's a lot of things on my desk right now that uh, are running contrary to my uh, early Catholic upbringing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm faced with some personal challenges right now, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Anyway, uh, no, Jared's right, and, and I'm so bad about this, um, about pointing that out. We get on these things, and we kind of just ramble, and Jared always tries to bring it back to the to the point. Yes, please share. You know, um, whatever you guys would like to see, let us know, because we're not that creative, and uh, <laughs> we're out. We're done. We're out. We're out of good ideas. Uh, yep, yeah, yeah, the out of RAM. Can't come up with anything new. Uh, no more room to uh, be creative. Uh, but yeah, you guys, uh, y- you know, let us know. I was thinking about something that would be neat. And, and Jared, I think we talked about this. Of course, you got to love Loch Ness Monster. I was thinking how cool, would it, how cool would it be to have kind of an acrylic breakaway in the front, you know, the different layers of the lake and so on. And what is it that a lot of people hypothesize that Nessie might be like a platyosaurus? Um, a plesiosaur, mosasaur, that kind of thing, or, or even an eel. You know, Is there such thing as a platyosaurus? Am I mispronouncing that? I think you just uh, made that up. Did I? Well, yeah. It sounds like it should be something, right? It sounds real. It might be real for all I know. In this really rare book I have, this little, this manual that we'll take a reference from, it refers to Nessie <laughs> as the elusive platyosaurus. Okay. And anyway, so we, 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 we stick the little chubby dinosaur floating on the water, right? And then uh, it's got the breakdown of the lock. And, uh, you know, you, can, you stick the telltale neck, the snorkel out of the water, if you will, and the rest yeah. of Nessie's below in the water, but it's it's in an acrylic breakaway, right? So you see her swimming through. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. You get it? That'd be kind of cool, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've seen like dioramas of like submarines and ships done like that. You know, the submarines yeah. below the surface, but yeah. the periscopes coming up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Dump out the sub, plug in Nessie. Yeah, yeah. See, guys, that right there. There's how a genius, the genius Boom. 500 run is born. Boom. Yep. That's how it happens. Uh, and then everybody writes in and goes, Nessie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, you do that, Nessie, you're going to get out of business. 
Yeah. Oh. Sharp opinions. Uh, uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get a cease and desist from Nessie. And, and yeah. for, the record, for the record, you were close. Um, and I'm probably gonna butcher this. I'm sorry. Plesiosaurus. P L E S I O Saurus. Yeah, taking uh, take it from uh, the last Plateosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> so I was right, and everybody else is wrong. But yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's a dead language. Prove me wrong. <laughs> so, I was gonna say no one. Actually, no. We will probably have like a doctorate in English. Like no, no, no. It's actually from this. Or, or, or a paleontologist. There, just yeah. Yeah, or or anybody with an IQ above room temperature just writes in and says, "Stop it, <laughs> just, just quit." Or, Please or stop eight, watching dinosaurs. <laughs> an eight-year-old who's like a super genius with dinosaurs. Yeah, watch watch our follower count on Instagram literally drops after this video, like <laughs> like just like down ten. You know, I'm so done with these idiots. Did you hear um, what they said about dinosaurs? Can't believe that. Yeah, but it. I, I, <laughs> would be really cute with Nessie though just because you I've never seen anything like that and I love the Loch Ness Monster stories I just I think that's so much fun I'm, I'm sorry I've so got at the back of my head that we get an email from Nessie <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, C and D you're uh, infringing on my IP yeah I got my own act over here guys come up with your own material <laughs> and then we get a letter from Nessie's handler. If you want to work with Nessie, you know. right. signature series, $3,000 a piece. I somehow think it's funnier if we get a cease and desist from Bigfoot, but he he, he doesn't get a lawyer. So he's just trying to represent himself. Yeah, it's just, he's like in, in a tree hollow trying to type. Like, stop. Scratched into a piece of bark. A chunk of bark. <laughs> 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 actually a treasure map and we have to go find the trees that it's actually on so we we read the whole letter in multiple trees but we have to go find them first he churches up his name sir big de la foot you know? it's, Sas it's sasquatch not bigfoot uh. <laughs> get my name right man yeah we well, yeah, have stop throwing problem. beef jerky at me yeah it's <laughs> but but we could do uh like ufos and stuff like uh Bob Lazar, I'd love to get a hold of this guy because he did that series of prints where he drew, you know, oh, yeah. he did like a little limited number of, um, uh, I, I think he called it the sports model. Uh, yeah, yeah. He was describing the different, you know, craft he had seen. Um, it'd be nice to make him a, a, a real world model of that. That'd be fun, yeah. That particular craft, as per his, you know, or, or the small pieces of like Roswell wreckage, that kind of stuff would be kind of cool. I about that too. You know, people, um, you know, there's that telltale little bit of I beam we hear about that had, you know, yeah, with the symbols on it, better symbols on it, um, that sort of yeah. thing. That'd be fun doing little things yeah, like yeah. that. So, you know, essentially anything you wanted, anything your 12 or 13 year old self would, you know, kick your current self's ass for not making, yeah. we should make. The stuff that was in the back of uh, comic books, except very high quality and professionally yeah. made. That's another thing we've talked about. You know, you know, Tyler and I used to go round and round about that. I, I love Tyler. Like to, I'm, I'm sure all you two, Jared, it's a little bit past your time, Amy, but because, you know, you're young and perfect. But uh, the rest of us are old and tired. But uh, <laughs> the uh, when you would go rack toys, you know, when particularly 70s, 80s, early 80s era rack toys. Um, uh, just, just how wonderful they were, but they would always fall short of your expectation. Like you could buy the chips yeah. cop set and it would be a little gun and a little undersized pair of handcuffs and yep. like a little teeny badge. It would always, and if you saw it in a comic or something, you'd want it. But then when you saw it in real life, just, oh, you know, oh, you know, or the Star so Trek the game, game. like three sizes too small. I thought it would be cool to do like uh, when we're working with the, one of our licensees, so we we talked about this to 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 do like the adult end all be all premium rack toy, like yeah. like uh, use a Star Trek phaser as an example, even though they're never going to give us that damn license because um, uh, everybody else has got it. Uh, let's talk about licensing, gang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so, but, but let's let's say you you did the phaser, and it, it, of course it's a step above what Playmates did, and not quite as high end as what like Master Replicas did or the Wong Company is doing. But it's a good facsimile of a phaser on a badass card. You know the card's oversized, got all the cool artwork on it. But it's what in your younger self's mind it should have been, kind of the. Uh, the, the the higher end end all be all version of that toy. I think it'd be so cool to do that. Uh, just for me, it was uh, it was sea monkeys for me. Like the picture showed, yeah, it looked like Nept- Neptune's kingdom, and there was the guy with the trident, and then the the mermaid looking. Like, and then you get the real ones. You're like, what the hell is this? Yeah, the little the little Brian Shrimp itself isn't yeah. that interesting, but the the overdone sea monkey jumping through hoops, and it's got his right. little family, and there's a little baby monkey and the little baby sea monkey and the in the high chair getting banana treat and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I used to love those art cards. What's that mean? Can we what? make some sea monkey families? Because I always <laughs> wanted to get some of those and all, my mom always told me that it was not gonna be what I wanted it to be. And so we never got any, but I always- like, met Listen, him. there's an IP problem and a family problem. I told you guys about my great, great, great grandfather, Walter Van Buren. He, he invented the X-ray specs and the sea monkey. And then for a brief period, um, I had inherited some some IP rights to Sea Monkeys. I didn't do shit for like five years because I was just living off Sea Monkey money. And then and then there was a big dispute, big lawsuit about the copyright. And I didn't tell you guys about that. I feel like no. this is two truths and a lie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> none of that happened. <laughs> none of that happened. But I yeah, wanted yeah. to. Hey, I'm calling Dreamer. She'll tell me the I truth. I want it to be true so bad because I love sea monkeys that much. Is the point? Uh, I, <laughs> I, 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 I love X-ray specs. I love sea monkeys. Like Jared's saying, we talked about that before. Just the artwork on those old cards that sold you. Oh, yeah. I mean, awesome. hell, they made Whoopi Cushion artwork look interesting. In case yeah. you didn't get what the Whoopi Cushion did, there'd be the picture the whole scenario. Of the Ripping ass of the cloud yeah. flying out, you know. <laughs> Whoop! <laughs> put it, put it under your grandma's chair. She was an old lady, like, oh no! <laughs> yeah, she's she's stroking out because the sound. Yeah. <laughs> to grandma, I'm there control you of my faculties. <laughs> 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 my facilities. I'm about. Uh, anyway, I uh, but I loved all those cards, and and yes, if you guys like that idea, not the whoopee cushion or the you know somebody. Dying because a fart scared him to death. But if if you guys uh, if you guys like the idea of the exaggerated oversized like rack toys, man, there's a great book out there. Um, I think Plaid Stallions did the book. Uh, it's kind of a it's a love letter to uh, rack toys. It's very thorough. Got a lot of great photos on it. In it of of and we've joked about it before. Like Spock's helmet. It's just a helmet with a red beacon on the top, and, a, and it says Spock. It Star makes Trek. Me- or Spock, yeah. yeah, and then uh, Tyler and I have gone off about that a million times. Like just the silliness of the rack toys, parachuting Cornelius from Planet of the Apes. It would oh, just yeah. be—it's a hard body replica of, of Cornelius with a with a square carved out his back and a parachute shut in because Corn- we know we all know that you know Cornelius he, he loves to parachute. Uh, you know, straight from the film, jam- he's a base yeah. jumper. You know, you can't can't deny him exactly. And then extreme. and then there would be the drinks red yeah, yeah, and then they get really, really bad with like um parachuting Superman. Like like he, he runs out of juice <laughs> just in case he runs out of juice. He needs that parachute. But someone anyway, in case someone has a kryptonite plane that makes him lose his powers and fall from the sky. Yeah. They're they're those think tanks weren't that large back then. I think we'll come up with those 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 toys, but it's like a uh, think cup. It, it would be fun though. I mean, take something like man, like like Logan's Run. Yeah, uh, you know, a cool old property like that. And you've got this big Logan's Run card, and there's like a full size Sandman flame gun on it. I guess I've just got that planted in my head because we played with flame guns a week ago. But stuff like that, like er, the, the ideal end all be all badass toy to be great. Um, Sorry, I did the Walter Van Buren sea monkey lie. I love it. It was very. It was presented in a very convincing manner. Mm-hmm. I'm not laughing. It was. It was good. But the, the but, only reason I was like, oh, I think you tried that on me a, a year or two ago. Oh really? So I, 
Oh yeah, I, I remember. I'm like, no, this isn't true. What are you talking about? <laughs> you almost had me for a second. Like, eh, wait a second. Wait, nah. Mm-mm. I, I was debating whether or not I was going to, nah, we'll save it for another time. There's Easter eggs in this video. We all have one. Uh, but no, we'll talk about that another time. You guys know what I'm talking about, where I set the thing out last week about the uh, Fraternal Order of the Atom, the, the MIT honorary yeah. inductee, you know, that whole story. We'll save that for another time. As everybody's like, what yeah. the hell <laughs> what are you talking about? But a lot of people bought that. That was good. Uh, did I tell you guys, here's one, uh, did, did I tell you guys about, I think we talked about it in a video though, um, where I, where I tried to buy the Amityville Horror House. You did tell me that. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, yeah, I feel like I've heard this story. Yeah. Um, I don't think we talked about it in a video though. You should tell it. I don't We've think got so a few either. minutes. All right. So, so when the Amityville Horror House came up for sale, uh, this was, uh, Man, it was a while back. I, I think it was like eight or nine years ago. Um, I had a guy that, that I was just kidding. I, I was just, we were just shooting the shit. I'm like, I should buy that house. I should turn it into a bed and breakfast. I mean, the the merchandising possibilities alone, you know, bathrooms. I, I survived, you know, the Amityville Horror House. I had all these ideas. We'll bring the coroner over at midnight. He'll tell the story of the DeFeo murders and blah, blah, blah. And we'll go room to room. It was this whole weird thing. Um, you know, somehow the, the events that happened there, you know, don't seem real. You know, we've heard the story so many times by way of Hollywood that it, you know, forget some of that stuff happened. Anyway, the guy goes, man, I really think you got something there. And, uh, was backed me on the purchase of the, uh, Amityville Horror House. And, uh, I ended up, uh, you, you know, we ended up getting ready to put in an offer and it was contingent upon that property being zoned commercial. So it would have done me no good just to own the old DeFeo, um, you know, house or the Lutz house, you know, but DeFeo's first and Lutz. Uh, but yeah, we were there. Uh, we were like, yeah, we'll buy it. And um, uh, it's contingent upon the city zoning the uh, property commercial and they want no part of it. Uh, you know, of course, <laughs> looky loose and, and everything. They've changed the name of that street. They've changed the uh, the iconic you know, eye windows. Oh yeah. Um, they're not like that anymore. Yeah. They, all that, all that's been changed. Um, but I'd floated all kind of ideas. I'm like, man, we can take, and you guys will remember this. I was like, we'll take little pieces of brick from the red room, you know, in the basement, we'll chop them up, stick them in test tubes, big picture of the house. And we'll sell concentrated pieces of evil, you know, and everybody, yeah, hey, let's do that. That's such a good idea. And, and anyway, uh, no, we were there. We were there. And, and the night that we had, we were talking about, you know, the contingency on it. Uh, you know, Rhonda, my wife, she goes, who's going to go and look at this thing? We're going to have to go preview it. We're going to have to do a walkthrough. And, uh, and then the willies hit. Yeah. You know, I was like, uh, yeah, 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 you know, so, uh, and, and there, there were a lot of ideas floating around this thing. What's, uh, what state was it in? Is it New York? No, uh, no, uh, it's uh, it's Long it's Island, right? No, oh, okay. no, Amityville, Amityville, New York. Yes, it's New York. Okay, okay. I knew it was yeah. northeast somewhere. All right. But I always, I always get it's 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 Amityville, ergo the name Amityville Horror. But that always yeah. messed, messed me up with Amity and Jaws when I was a kid. I'm like, oh, man, yeah, how yeah. much fortune can can fall on one town? You know, <laughs> they get the shark problem. It's Long Jeez. Island. They got this evil <laughs> problem. You know, I'm like, how much stuff can happen? But yeah, Amity. Uh, yeah, New York. Uh, Amityville. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So if you guys are waiting on me to go, hey, that's all bullshit. No, no. That, that was real. <laughs> that uh, one's real. <laughs> that was a real thing. And then we were late trying to get the Goonies house. Somebody got them. Yeah. But well, you know, we, the, um, we the, same the E.T. Thought. house is up for sale now. The E.T. house in uh, Simi Valley, which was. Really? My my next door city when I grew up in Thousand Oaks, we we we'd go over to Simi Valley. You could drive up the street and see the ET house. Like, oh, there it is. Yeah, right on. Cool. Is that the voice you made when you saw it? I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. It's all Tom talks. <laughs> <laughs> we should we should collectively buy that house and then make a fun ET house like you were talking. I like about. the idea of that. I li I like the idea of those. Um, well, stigmatized or otherwise properties. It's the old realtor in me. 
but maybe it's the poltergeist house. Maybe I'm getting mixed up. Okay, that I don't know that I would be able to walk into the poltergeist house. It's one of those. I really, I it's either it's either poltergeist or ET. I can't remember. It's like the most non-scary haunted house because it had that '80s, you know, yeah, vibe to it. You know, when all houses kind of looked that way back then. Uh, big and old, or funky staircase. You know. Yeah, yeah. My friend's house looked just like that, and when I saw that, I was too young to see it. I, mm -mm, I would not want to go in that house. <laughs> Um, there, there's, there's definitely places that have weird scarred landscapes. Um, when Jared was here, we went to this place called, um, Alice's grave. Uh, oh, yeah. for, for the two or three of you that are left watching this, since this has been the most schizophrenic all over the place, <laughs> we've done. uh, if you want to, if you want to check out Alice's grave, um, it's at all Saints cemetery in Polly's Island, South Carolina. It's a really interesting ghost story. And, uh, Jared and I had gone down there and uh, roamed around this really old graveyard. And it was funky, right? We remember when yeah. we were there. The news, the news. There was somebody like from the news there. It was close to Halloween. There was a news and crew, and they they asked us about. I think about the gray man. A bit of an interview with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They it was about the gray man. I think they were asking about or something. Some kind no, of local lore. I think they might have referenced gray man, which is another local. Thing, but no, they were just standing there flat in the middle of her, you know, her yeah. gravestone, and uh, you know, just eh, just standing right in the middle of her resting spot there. Uh -huh. And uh, what are you guys here for? And uh, well, same reason you're here. What do you think? Remember though, when we first got there, we were the only ones there, and there was some animal that was in the corner, and it jumped out as, as soon as we got there. And you were like, I think that was like a bobcat or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I really think it was. Because um, so Amy at the back of the, we'll go next time you come. No, Amy. you took me. You took me. It was oh, one I'm of the last places we went. Yes, yes, yes. Well, no visit is complete without it. I forgot about that. Absolutely. You know the deal. So that back gate, I told you about that when when and we kind of poked back there because I think you were trying to show me where yeah. this happened because we were seeing a bunch of footprints and stuff back there too yeah oh. Jared, Jared was heading towards it first where all the old bricks and everything were in that that gate in that far right hand corner and then when we went back there yeah it was like this object just and I was telling a story about you know when I'd gone there when I was little and thought I saw some crazy shit but uh we should do that like um when we do our uh, our our annual paragon thing when everybody comes in we should go downtown Charleston and do one of the, uh, the, well, we'll do a pub crawl, but they've got the ghost tour. Ghost tour. Yes. And have me a ghost tour. I did that yeah. ghost tour once and it was cool, man. They take you back on, um, some it's like old weird cobblestone streets. Like, Hey, this was the only place in Charleston where it was legal to have a duel. And, uh, you can kill people you can kill each other. Just do it right here. This is your designated. Yeah, yeah. You got to beef with this guy. You want to waste him. Here's where you do it. Right. Here, I did those in New Orleans in the French Quarter. It was awesome. I would love to do it in Charleston. That sounds right. We'll do that. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. We'll, because we'll, um, fall is a good time to do this thing we keep talking about anyway. Have, uh, as we forget that there's people listening to us right now. So, Absolutely. yeah, so everybody's, everybody's left. Yeah, we keep talking about doing a Paragon retreat where we all, you know, we don't get enough of each other during the day. We have to physically get together, you know, and in, at the home office and talk hey, about what and if we announce when team paragon is going to do a ghost walk Here in, it comes. in charleston then we just invite everybody hey guys we're going to be on the ghost walk at one o'clock on saturday you know blah 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 come and join that'd be funny if like 30 people showed up we're like what hey what daniel flies in yeah, right? daniel. Right? Right? yes yes <laughs> daniel you can stay with us bro you can, I got a couch. We got a couple couches at Paragon. You can stay on the couch. We got you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just pile it. It'll be great. I want to stick in the hotel room by himself. He can stay with us. Because remember, I was saying we shouldn't, we should, we should all like hang out at the office like uh, the Brady Bunch sleepover. You know, nobody gets a hotel room. We have to. <laughs> sounds, like a, it sounds like a great idea. Warehouse. <laughs> Well, I am going to have to wrap us up because I'm not going to be able to get this posted if it goes on much longer. Yeah, we got nothing done today. Go team. Yay. I, I really thought this was going to be like a 15 minutes of nothing. I did turn too. In it went to a lot of minutes. weird places with no, Yeah, there, there wasn't a logical thought tied into anything really. But hey, we covered the um, the obscurity stuff. 
yeah. the cabinet of curiosity things. So again, if you guys like any of that thing, you've got some ideas, chime in, let us know. Uh, also, if you want to be on one of these with us, like Daniel was brave enough to be, um, <laughs> jump in. Um, it, it, it'll be fun to keep doing that. And uh, the other thing we never say, but if, if, if you do in, enjoy these at all, we, we need some sort of you know, reassurance, some positive affirmation that, that, that people watch these. So if you actually follow us on Instagram, we'll be like, Hey, we picked up two or three extra followers. Those must be the people who like these videos that we do or, uh, or just, um, follow us on YouTube or whatever. Uh, we'll get some inkling that you either hate these things or want us to keep doing them. So there you go. Yes. Well, thank you guys. And we'll see you next week. All right. Bye guys. All right. Have a good week. Bye. See you.